So Lynn, um, thank you once again for doing this interview. Um, I know that you recently spent some time um, living in various NYCHA apartment buildings. I wonder um, what it was like for you. It was horrific, uh, Marcia. It was um, certainly exactly what I sadly expected. Um, I saw rats, I saw roaches, I saw lead paint, I saw black toxic mold, um, I saw raw sewage dripping down the wall. Um, it is uh, incredibly inhumane what these residents have been forced to endure for far too long. And it's nothing short of a humanitarian crisis, as I've said before. So how did, how did that experience change your views and how you want to help fix it? It certainly steeled my resolve to make sure that we uh, effectuate immediate uh, reform in the next six to eight months. Um, never before has there been a federal monitor in place of this magnitude and authority. Uh, there is no question that uh, the information that I've gathered from my one month stay is already in play in terms of his uh, proposals that we're going to uh, draft together. And um, one of the biggest things uh, is, is certainly where is the $30 million a week that the federal government gives to NYCHA and the city for repairs and operations going? Because it's certainly not going to the residents' repairs. So you're saying that the $30 million a week, which seems like a huge amount of money. Seems like a huge amount of money because it is a huge amount of money, Marcia. It's um, certainly more than the last administration gave. Um, and, you know, I intend to certainly advocate for more funding if, in fact, it's actually being used to fix the repairs that are needed. But you want proof that it's going to repairs. Thank you. That, I don't think that's too much to ask, and quite frankly, it shouldn't have anything to do with politics. The residents want to know the answer, too. And I would think anybody um, who cares about the New York taxpayer also wants to know where this money is going. Um, to me, again, this isn't about posturing. It's not about fear-mongering um, with a, a, a draft budget. To me, this is about you know, a mayor who has spent over $400 million in, during his admi I'm sorry, what? Oh. I'm sorry, <laughs> this, is, this is about? This is about a mayor who has spent more than $400 million during his administration on union overtime with what to show forth? Nothing. Um, it would be one thing if NYCHA said, you know what, HUD, we've spent $200 million on overtime the last two years. But look at all the things we've repaired. They can't do that, Marcia. There is nothing being repaired in these units. Do um, you ask for proof? Of, uh, uh, can, can you ask for proof and can they give it to you? Well, when I first started here, one of the things I told um, the Office of Inspector General here at HUD was that I did want an audit done on, on NYCHA. Um, they unfortunately can't confirm or deny that they're in the process of doing that um, because it's a separate legal entity. But um, it's my understanding that they are in the process of doing that. They've been auditing NYCHA for about a year now. Um, the federal monitor has a team of forensic accountants who are already um, securing a lot of data with respect to the operational costs of NYCHA. For example, how many people are making over $100,000 at NYCHA? How many people are making over $200,000 at NYCHA? These are questions that the monitor, that myself, that the secretary, that the president of the United States want answers to. So you're thinking that the money's being wasted? I know that the money's being wasted. Um, for example, one of the units that I stayed in uh, in Brooklyn had a leaky basement, yet NYCHA thought that was the perfect place to store about 40 brand new doors that had not even been used. Um, those doors were destroyed, obviously, through uh, water damage. Um, some of them actually were stolen um, because there was no lock on the basement um, and probably sold on, under uh, the black market. You know, this is waste that uh, the residents don't deserve, that the taxpayers don't deserve, and uh, that is completely avoidable. I'm not going to throw money at a mismanaged agency. So are, have you shared your experiences and your views with um, HUD Secretary Ben Carson and with President Trump? A hundred percent. And what do they say? What does the president They're say when mortified. you tell them? The president is a New Yorker first and foremost, I want to remind people. When he saw me on television and living in these conditions, he called the secretary right away. He said, I want 
a conference call immediately about the conditions in New York City Public Housing Authority because this is not acceptable, uh, particularly for the amount of money that the taxpayers are forking over. So you recently tweeted that criminal charges could be in the offing. I wonder if you could tell me what you meant by that. Well, you know, I, I got my knuckles wrapped a little bit by the SDNY because, you know, HUD is not a law enforcement agency. I think what I wanted to make most clear is that the removal of the civil complaint in court um, does not preclude the SDNY from pursuing criminal charges. Should criminal charges be pursued? I personally think they should. Um, because? Deception and fraud, blatant deception and fraud. On that's part been of who? Ongoing. Uh, it's been a culture of deception, Marsha, unfortunately, probably for the last decade at NYCHA. Um, on their home page, when you logged in as an employee at NYCHA on their home page, they had literally a cheat sheet of how to pass a physical HUD inspection from HUD. You know, paint cardboard from a distance that looks like tile. Hide anything flammable until they leave. These are crimes. Um, that is not something that is um, is just, you know, uh, an innocent uh, gesture. That is a, a, a cheat sheet for committing crimes and somebody should be held accountable. You can't tell me that everybody who logged in didn't see that. It wasn't like they were even hiding it. Um, well, some of those things were in the federal complaint. Now, mm -hmm. I wonder, because the complaint has been dismissed, does that mean that um, these charges will be dismissed or can you bring them back in the future? No, and that's my point, is that just because the uh, civil complaint has been dismissed does not mean that those charges um, can't continue to be pursued. And I also want to say that the federal monitor, during the course of his uh, presence here, if he stumbles across deception or sabotage or fraud, he too can recommend charges. Are you calling on him to look for that? Um, I absolutely am. So We've already had conversations about it. You've talked to Bart Schwartz mm -hmm. and you've told him if he sees anything, he I've should press charges? I've told him that there are um, valid complaints that have come to me over the last year and a half, two years that I've been here in this position um, that indicate um, some actual uh, sabotage and indicate uh, existing deception or fraud, yes. On the part of, of NYCHA employees? On the part of NYCHA employees, yes. So do you feel that, that Shola, Shola Olatoya should have been charged for lying about the lead paint? You know, I'm not going to talk about who specifically should be held responsible because, again, I'm not in law enforcement and that's for the SDNY to determine. But, you know, um, I will say that the mayor's own former chairperson, Shola Oyatale, told me that the unions are the single biggest impediment to turning NYCHA around. Um, his interim chair, Stanley Brezhnev, told me the same thing. My question would be to the mayor, why are you not listening to the own people that you hired? Um, why are you afraid to push back against these contracts that are wasting uh, money without repairs? So you're saying that the union contracts waste money? I'm saying the union contracts waste money. Um, I'm also saying that in my personal opinion, um, there could be also uh, evidence of, of, of sabotage on behalf of the unions with respect to some of the new boilers that we've been purchasing. What do you mean? Well, some of the um, unions aren't trained to service those boilers because they literally are run by iPads, touch pads. Um, and so NYCHA has hired a third party vendor to service those. Um, I believe even the company that makes them, um, they're breaking. And the question is why. Where have they broken? You know, Shola had mentioned to me um, that that was something that she suspected. I don't have proof of that. Hopefully the monitor can get proof of that. Have you asked Bart Schwartz to get proof of that? I would rather keep our conversations private, but I think that that's something that needs to get to the resolved. Um, it's more Brand new boilers don't break on their own. And since the city just embarked on a $300 million contract to put in even more boilers, that mm -hmm. makes it even more important. Makes it even more important. And how the monitor goes about doing that, whether it's hidden cameras, whether it's uh, visible cameras, whether it's uh, an undercover investigation, is up to him. Do you, um, think, do you think the mayor is, it, d it doesn't want to take on the unions and that's why this goes on? A hundred percent. A hundred percent that, and it's, it's, it's reprehensible that anybody, Democrat or Republican, 
would put their own personal political aspirations ahead of the inhumane conditions being suffered by his own constituents. You think that's what's happening? I know that's what's happening. So basically, he just, <laughs> his presidential ambitions, he doesn't want to talk about NYCHA on the campaign trail, so... Look, I don't care if he runs for president. Um, you know, uh, the, I think you are the one who scooped last week that the head of the Democratic Party doesn't seem to care if he runs for president herself. Um, what I will say is this. Uh, we have an important position to fill, probably one of the most critical positions um, that's vacant right now in the city, and that is the chairperson of NYCHA, and he's traipsing around this country. I would not be surprised if he asks HUD and the SDNY for an extension to fill that position, and it's unfair. The residents of, of NYCHA deserve his focus. When is that position supposed to be filled? It's supposed it to be filled next week. By next week? By next week. Um, 60 days from the date of the signature of the agreement that um, he and Carson signed. And appointing um, Catherine Garcia as a temporary chair doesn't fit the bill? You know, I have nothing against Catherine Garcia. We've actually met a few times, and I think she is uh, being put in a situation that, uh, you know, is unfortunate. But I, I think that in order for us, me, the monitor, um, the city, the residents to move forward, they deserve a permanent chairperson, and the mayor is not focusing on that. And if he comes to you and says, I need an extension, what will you say? <sighs> I know what I'm going to say to HUD and, and the STNY. Um, but, you know, it's ultimately the secretary's decision, the U.S. attorney's decision. Um, I just think it's unfair. It's unfair that he hasn't given the level of focus uh, that it deserves, that the residents deserve. We need to move ahead. You know, um, as much as I love Judge Pauly, it took him five months to reach a, a decision about the consent decree. The residents are out of time. We don't have time to waste anymore. Um, the days of, of games are over. Uh, within six to eight months, I've already told the monitor, and he fully agrees, we need real change on the ground. Um, six to eight months? Yes. Um, there's no reason within six to eight months why we can't hire more caretakers, why we can't put more permanent boilers on the ground, why we can't put more external compactors on the ground. Real capital need purchases. Um, that's what my goal is going to be in the next six to eight months, and I'll be working closely with the monitor and the new chairperson on that. Do you think it's achievable? I know it is. It has to be. It has to be. You know, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I know it is. It has to be. Um, for me, this isn't about politics. It's about the people. I have now made personal promises to the residents of NYCHA that I intend to see through. Um, it's not about the president, it's not about the secretary, it's not about the mayor, it's not about the governor, it's not even about the federal monitor. For me, I have made promises now that I am going to keep um, to these people. I would never have put myself out there like this if I wasn't going to do that. Um, I wouldn't get their hopes up. That would be cruel. So do you think that, that the mayor has not paid as much attention to NYCHA as he should since he signed the the consent decree and went off to campaign thinking he doesn't have to deal with it? Well, look, I know he's um, pitched a few names of people he wants uh, HUD and SDNY to consider adding to the list of candidates for chairperson. Some of them don't even have housing experience at all. Um, it makes me question whether or not he's taking this uh, selection very seriously or if he just wants a patsy that he can control in office. Now, how does that work? Does, does he have to give you the names or can you come up with your own names? How does it work? I think, uh, well, all parties are coming up with names. Um, you know, he is uh, having a dialogue with the SDNY when he comes up with a name. His chief of staff will suggest it to the Southern District. We will then vet it to so see if it meets So, but a lot of these people our, don't have qualifications? I don't think so. I don't think so. And the ones that do, um, supposedly he's not interested in. It's mind-boggling, Marsha. My mind, my mouth is like <laughs> hanging open here. You know? Um, and look, I know he likes to say this is his choice, but I always say if my parents gave me a list of three or five men that I could choose as a husband. Uh, I don't think that's really a choice. Uh, so the mayor can phrase it however he wants. Um, this is a decision that's going to have to be approved by HUD and SDNY. And you're going to make sure the person's qualified? 
I'm going to do my best. Um, I'm a very vocal, loud person. <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, typically get my way. But uh, ultimately, again, it's going, the, the, the mayor will be able to decide on a, on a name from a list of, of closed universe candidates. So mold is one of the biggest problems at NYCHA, which is caused by um, leaking roofs. Mm. But to replace the roofs is billions and billions of dollars. Where will that money come from? How do you do it? Billions of dollars. And again, you know, even Judge Pauly said in his consent decree decision, last year NYCHA sat on about $486 million that was uh, earmarked for capital repairs, did nothing with it. Why are you sitting on that? Are you trying to just live off the interest? What's happening here? You know, what are you doing with the money we're giving you? Um, you know, the mayor, to his credit, uh, you know, dedicated, I think, a, a billion dollars um, towards roofs over the next 10 years. You know, where is this money going? Why are you not actually using it? This is what the federal monitor is going to get to the bottom of. Um, it's what we have to get to the bottom of. We need to start spending the money that we have before we start throwing more money at ineptitude and gross mismanagement. So speaking of money, the federal government has really cut its support to NYCHA over the years, you mm, know, going yes. back, you know, a long time. From 2002 to 2010, there was an 18 percent decrease in funds, and that was like millions and millions of dollars, even more after that. Yes. Is the federal government at all culpable in terms of creating the conditions that of we see course. at NYCHA? Of course. Without question, you know, um, there are a lot of folks who can take the blame here. Um, you know, I want to make it clear that the president does not decide how much money uh, public housing gets, that the um, HUD does not dis make, decide that figure either. Um, that's a figure that's determined by Congress. Um, a, a federal formula is then used to determine well, how listen, much money gets. Well, it goes back to 2002. That's 15 Thank years. You. It's been divested across both sides of the aisle. So, you know, um, but the days, as Secretary Carson said, of the federal government riding in on a big white horse with a big bucket of money are over. And we need to um, turn NYCHA around through Trinity funding. The, uh, the state, city, and federal government need to work together to fix this problem. It's all of our responsibilities. So I get the feeling from talking to you that you don't think the city is up to doing things in an economical way because you think that the union contracts and that are through all aspects of repairs and building at NYCHA are going to pad the cost. Is that, is that really what you're saying? You know, Marcia, I tell this story to my folks here at HUD. When I worked at the Trump Organization, they purchased uh, what was called the former Kluge Winery down in Charlottesville, Virginia. One of the things that we did when we took over, it was in bankruptcy, was to go through all their outstanding invoices and make them current. There was an invoice from Lowe's um, for a power washer that the previous owner had rented um, for a period of eight years, I believe. The outstanding invoice totaled in excess of $10,000. Um, you know, do you know how many power washers you could buy at that point for ten thousand dollars? Um, a lot of them. NYCHA is a bunch of power washers uh, that are rented. Um, they are not spending their money in the most economically efficient manner. Even just what I said earlier, the fact that you're storing doors in a in a leaky basement it doesn't doesn't make any sense. Um, these are uh, overpriced power washers that are all over the place, and we need to eliminate that sort of misspending. So how do you put the mayor's feet to the fire and get him to actually concentrate on making things better, spending money wisely, making sure that the unions don't sabotage the boilers, making sure that the money that comes in from HUD, $30 million a week, actually goes to repairs? How do you do that? Well, that's for the federal monitor, myself, and the chairperson to come up with. Um, you know, we need better uh, reporting lines. We need uh, more accountability. We need um, to make sure that uh, we trim the fat at the top and hire more people on the ground. Um, you know, uh, there are far too many people at NYCHA wearing button-up white shirts and not enough wearing button-down coveralls. Um, this is going to change. And so, the mayor needs to get on board or get out. So, so you think that you have too many people who are 
getting um, managerial salaries and not enough uh, people? A hundred percent. How would you change it? Well, you know, I, I don't want to talk about what the monitor strategies are, but I know he's already secured a list of, of the top paid employees at NYCHA and is reviewing whether or not any of those positions are redundant, you know, whether or not those positions are needed, necessary, um, you know, who we can eliminate, who we can't. Um, those are decisions for him to make ultimately, um, but uh, I trust his judgment. He's a very sound person. Heads will roll? Heads will roll. So are you at all optimistic that the recent deal with the city will help fix the problems? I'm confident that it's certainly given um, NYCHA a step in the right direction. I personally would have liked the monitor to have more authority, but um, you know, I'm happy with the authority that he has. It's historic. Um, and quite frankly, people need to remember the secretary deliberately left open the possibility of a federal receivership still. That's still on the table. If um, the city is not cooperating with the federal monitor's recommendations, then that's something we can still explore. So let me ask you this question. What do you do if the federal monitor comes back a year from now and says the city isn't keeping its end of the bargain? What's the, what's the <laughs> plan to enforce the deal? Well, um, there's a lot of steps we can take. Um, certainly replacing leadership is one of them. Uh, certainly going into receivership is another. Um, certainly taking over um, NYCHA from a HUD perspective is a third. Um, we can do any of the above. Um, and uh, quite frankly, uh, I don't think it will, uh, the monitor would even allow it to get to that point. If he sees in the first quarter that they're not cooperating with us, there's going to be trouble. Would you go back to court? Absolutely. Look, the U.S. Attorney, Jeff Berman, uh, has spent probably more man hours investigating NYCHA, he said, than he has on any other legal case in his lifetime. Um, it means so much to him. I've talked to him all the time. He's extremely passionate about what's happening here and, and how horrible it is um, and would jump at that in a heartbeat if he felt that the residents were not being duly served. So what's your message to tenants? I mean, you had made, established a personal connection with some of them. Yes. I wonder what your message to them is as you sit here today knowing that, for example, the city has a week to appoint yeah. a new head of NYCHA and there's been no word. No, no headway on I mean, what's on your that. message? My message to them is, you know, I know you've been lied to. I know you've been sold a false bill of goods. I know that um, you are living in horrific conditions. But change truly is finally coming. Don't judge me today. Judge me in six to eight months. That's all I need. And you really think six to eight months is a doable thing? I've already told the monitor, look, I have put that date out there. Don't make me look bad. We need to make a uh, huge hedgeway in, the, in that time. You know, some of the, the tenants that you, you live with say that the buildings were fixed up before you came and then afterwards the changes disappeared. How do you feel about that? Are you, do you feel you're personally to blame for that? that no, that, that's exactly that what I thought would happen. In why? fact, well, first of all, every time I've visited a NYCHA property over the last two years, the trash gets picked up, the elevators are working, the lobbies smell like Febreze um, instead of urine. I anticipated that that would happen. Um, the, the, every time I went to another property, the residents would tell me we've never seen them wax the floors. We've never seen them do uh, preventative maintenance on the elevators before. Um, can you stay here forever? Um, it's sad, but NYCHA proved me right. Um, what, is, what I can tell you, Marcia, is that every single distressed property that I visited on my tour while I lived there, um, we would go to at least four or five distressed properties in each development per week. Mm -hmm. They've all been fixed. Um, they are all, look, Mr. Gilbert, a man I met at Douglas Houses, hadn't had a shower in two years. He was bathing in his sink every day. Um, he now has a working shower. These are things that if I could bring immediate repairs on the ground, I'm glad to have done it. But for the haters who want to say, what was the purpose of me living in NYCHA? 
I'll tell you. Number one, um, according to a software program we have here at HUD, um, my stay at NYCHA generated over five to 600 articles per week nationwide. Um, in fact, the monitor and I were having lunch the other day. He told me a friend of his in Germany saw my stay on television over there and overseas. Um, that is amazing to me. Um, it's shown a spotlight on an on inhumane condition. Um, number two, immediate repairs have been made to the residents that I visited and the um, distressed neighbors um, that they had that we put on camera. Um, temporary, obviously, repairs were made um, to the lobbies and elevators and things like this. I also sat off camera with the maintenance teams and asked them themselves, what do you need to better serve the residents who live here? Pretend I'm Santa Claus. If tomorrow, what would you ask for? Would it be more caretakers? Would it be more maintenance workers? Would it be a, a boiler? I have that information. I've shared it with the monitor. We're going to make sure they get what they need. Fourth and finally, um, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, the sitting president of the United States paid attention when I moved in um, to probably one of the greatest humanitarian crises here in this country. Um, that's never been done before. I don't think a sitting president has ever said, can I have a conference call about the conditions of NYCHA? It's, a, it's been a win-win across the board. So what do you think is the single biggest impediment? I'll be, uh, just two more questions. Mm -hmm. uh, just really two more questions. What's the single biggest impediment to getting change at NYCHA? Well, according to the mayor's own two former chairpersons of NYCHA, they've both personally told me um, that no question it's the union contracts, um, the prevailing wage. Um, I just want to know what amount of money are actual repairs, what amount of money are prevailing wages. Um, you know, the city and the mayor keep throwing this $32 billion capital needs number around. Um, and look, if that number is accurate and the monitor finds and his team of forensic accountants find that that's accurate, I'll eat that camera. Because I've talked to politicians, I've talked to private developers, I've talked to residents themselves, I've talked to people in Washington who all believe that that number is inflated due to union wages. And the problem is, is it breaks down to $181,000 per unit in repairs. Uh, over $100,000 of that are union wages. Um, again, my question to the mayor is, you expect me to push back against the president for more money? Push back against the unions to save some. So, so do you think that the mayor doesn't go after the unions because of politics? A hundred percent. A hundred percent, and it's disgusting that any politician, Democrat or Republican, would put their own political personal aspirations ahead of the inhumane living conditions of his own constituents. Is he doing that? Uh, I truly believe so, yes. So one last question. Mm -hmm. So there has been some talk of having NYCHA sell property to developers, you know, part, some where they have playgrounds or parking mm -hmm. lots or just, you know, trees and rolling hills in order to raise money. Do you, is that something you think is a good idea, a bad idea? Well, look, uh, the rental assistance demonstration program has certainly turned Ocean Bay around. You can ask any of the residents there if they still have all their existing rights. They do. I think RAD is a great program. Um, you can't even buy an apartment at Trump Tower with a parking space. I think sometimes, unfortunately, um, parking is a luxury in New York that folks can't afford, um, even in the private sector. Um, is it time to start looking at NYCHA parking lots as a potential um, expansions? Of course it is. Um, again, these are decisions for the new chairperson to make um, in conjunction with the monitor and myself.